we've looked at this at the Institute for the Study of War, and we've concluded that Russia's conducting a false flag operation here. For our audience, that means that they created this incident themselves. And, and why do we come to that conclusion? I mean, it doesn't fit Ukraine's pattern of behavior at, at all. First of all, there's little or no damage, and Ukraine would be absolutely seeking damage. Number two, I mean, hitting the top of the Senate dome appears to be well-framed for filming, which it clearly was, as opposed to destruction. And, and thirdly, the Russians came out very quickly with this is an attack and an assassination attempt by the Ukrainians on Vladimir Putin. When it's well known, Senator Cotton is absolutely right that Putin doesn't sleep in the Kremlin. He works uh, in the Kremlin unless there's some kind of crisis going on and he's going to stay overnight. And that was clearly not taken, taken place here. So what's really happening here? What, what is the motivation of Russia to do that? Well, we don't know for sure, but we can speculate that it likely has to do with 9 May that's coming up which is their celebration of their victory over Germany and the Nazis in World War II. Huge amount of casualties there, 22 to 25 million, depending on who's reporting it. But there's staggering casualties in Ukraine. And the people are becoming more and more aware of the toll that this is taking on the young people in Russia. And that, that's the reality of it. And this is a way to distract the people, the domestic audience, from that focus. And then to come out the next day and blame the United States yeah. as well, that fits into the narrative right from the very beginning. And also the narrative that Putin has been carrying on for years, Sandra, that it's the United States and the West who are encroaching on Russia, not the opposite. And this is why I'm going to war in Ukraine, because there's Nazi genocide taking place there, supported by the United States and the West. Yeah. This yeah. is, I think, what is really happening here. I am extremely glad you started with that clip as well. Uh, <laughs> I have a segment saved. I actually want to show you a clip. Um, like that's Fox News as well, and that's great they show that show that one because th uh, the liberal media has been pushing a ton of corporate propaganda and conspiracy theories regarding the drone attack that yeah. Russia suffered as well. So it's funny the establishment that smears any. Anyone who questioned government narratives as conspiracy theorists, have you guys heard the narrative that's been coming from the mainstream press regarding this terrorist attack on the Kremlin? It, now, all of a sudden, they're saying it's an inside job that Russia attacked itself. Remember, what would that sound like? Remember during the- That's not like North, North, North Street yeah. Pipeline. <laughs> so what the corporate media will have you believe is that Russia constantly bombing and attacking itself because it need justification. Why, why would Russia even do that? Like, if, if Russia is this dictatorship, tyrannical country where no one can question the Putin regime, why would they even need a false flag? Right. You they know, so, so many things don't make sense. I want to show. It's such a, a framing of of the imperialist core. It's such a framing because it's like this is what we would do. Like you, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's it's so they can't get out of that thinking. So they just think everybody is like that and. I think they know they're responsible for this. And we're going to get to an article. I think we can mesh together. I think you have something on it and I have I'm something on it. We can mesh that together. Yeah. We're going to get we're gonna get right to it. This is a good intro segment. It's okay, let's do segment. it. Before we get to the main story, you guys saw, uh, what well, we're going to show you if you haven't seen, uh, the Democratic Party panicking <laughs> because Joe Biden is massively unpopular. And, what, and remember on RBN, we told you, if things ever got messy in this primary, uh, the sham, fraudulent thing they call uh, democracy in this country, they would just shut down the primaries. And RFK, uh, not Marianne, but RFK has them sweating. He's hitting 20%, significant, doing significant yeah. damage. And that's not like a Marianne Wilson 20%. That's a 20%. <laughs> and I don't what I mean by that. <laughs> See, they oh. care about me today because they're not Marianne Wilson 20%. I'm going to explain what I mean. So Marion Wilson challenges Joe Biden without challenging his primary actions as the executive branch. She's talking about shit that, that senators and Congress people do in the legislative branch. So she's like, I'm going to really get Joe Biden. I'm going to criticize him for stuff that they didn't do in Congress. Meanwhile, RFK going for the throat. 
He's calling out his actions as commander in chief. Wow. I've seen some he's of the stuff. He's calling too. them out for the COVID policies. So th- this is a dangerous 20%. Like Marianne, they don't give a fuck about her nibbling on the outside. At the end of the day, they're gonna t- she's going to tell you to support the Ukraine war. She's not going to be too critical of empire. And, and you know for a goddamn fact she's a lockdown leftist. You know for a goddamn fact. So... Our I mean, she signaled to the ruling class. She signaled to the Democratic establishment by picking Peter Dushi. You tell me that's not a signal. Oh, Why would you? Jesus you're Christ. going after the. You're going after the Bernie Sanders voters, but you pick literally the biggest Bernie Sanders hack that people despise. I found so much content on this guy. So to me, Marianne Williamson, Nick, is also signaling, and that's, that kind of gives them the okay. She's she's okay because she they know she's not really going to do anything but when rfk jr jumped in this race nick yeah that's when they panicked they didn't give a fuck that marianne was running so the rfk started running so he took the big chunk that's when they're like fuck this no dem- no primaries no no debates not none at all so we're going to cover that later uh we get to the first intro uh story and this is this segment is how corporate media has been pushing unhinged conspiracy mm-hmm. theories regarding the terrorist attack on russia and it's been no secret that Ukraine has wanted to launch long-range attacks into Russian territory. That's why they've been demanding long-range missiles, long-range weapons to Russia. And for a country that promised that they didn't do this, it's kind of weird that you got Ukrainian and officials celebrating the, t- the drone attack <laughs> before they got whipped into line. Like, when this happened, they uh... you know what happened, CJ? This story is, is almost mirrors Nord Stream. Because when Nord Stream happened, yeah, Ukrainian officials that was like, thank you. Thank yeah. you, United States. You guys remember that? Thank you, United States. And they were sharing the Nord Stream pipeline bombing. And then the United States is bombing. So like, nigga, shut the fuck up. Come. I, re- I remember that viral tweet about it where the person said something. It was a viral tweet of not viral because they said something good, but viral because yeah. of the response uh, to it. And that was hap- that what happened at the drone attack. Ukrainian officials started immediately celebrating and then Zelensky and the United States like shut the fuck up shut the fuck up stop <laughs> giving it away what the fuck we are engaging in terrorism we cannot beat Russia in a straight out yeah. war uh, so we gotta do we gotta engage in terrorist acts like Nord Stream Pipeline like this attack on uh on Russia that we see now and I'm gonna show you guys there's two clips I have in mind so I'm gonna pre I'm gonna end my preface because uh we've got a little bit to get through and this guy McFall like people see him on Twitter this guy is one of the most unhinged Ukraine supporting <laughs> conspiracy theorists. So of course MSNBC calls him up. It's like, hey man, <laughs> hey come on down. <laughs> hey man, I heard you pretty fucking unhinged on this issue. We need you to weigh in on this. So let, let's watch this video. It really speaks for itself. But let's dive into this. First, a bit of news: uh, President Zelensky, who was in uh, in uh, Northern Europe and Finland today, said that we did not attack Putin. We leave that to the tribunal. And uh, Ukrainian officials have suggested that this was a false flag operation, that the Russians did this themselves in order to justify some sort of retaliation, to to escalate the conflict even further, perhaps to bring the fighting to Kiev, to bring it to the presidential palace in Kiev. I thought that's what they already were trying to do. Like, if you listen to all their coverage on the war, they said, we got to keep Zelensky's uh, location a secret because if Russia ever knows what Zelensky is, they're going to storm and kill him, no matter what the human cost. That's why they do these green, uh, green screen propaganda yeah. addresses. And they got to pretend they got to pretend. He, Russia never, at, it, at no point, tried to take over all of Ukraine. They had a very strategic goal in mind. But they tried, They put different uh, markers of success and goals on, uh, uh, on the Russian military so they could claim they was unsuccessful. So they would say... Ah, Russia didn't take over Kiev in one month. Ah, that's a failure. <laughs> Boom, that's like, that's not a fucking strategy. <laughs> that was it. Ah, you guys not fucking killing as many people we killed in Iraq in our first year. Ah, you guys are losing. Like, man, we trying to minimize Russian civilian casualties. But anyway, let's get, let's continue because this guy gets like the cope level increases 
And you can see the desperate angle that they spin as you watch this. As, as well. uh, why, asked uh, why uh, Putin would want to do this or why Russia would want to do this kind of thing. Uh, Zelensky responded, uh, Putin needs to motivate his people. He has no victories. So that's the official explanation <laughs> from, from the president from? of Ukraine. Now, the videos so, are, are very interesting. You have, and I actually heard Joe Scarborough meant this, funny enough, on, on the show. Western officials... That's like that hyping this Ukrainian offensive, cause they're like, man, if this Ukraine, this next upcoming Ukrainian offensive that's gonna be launched in the next four to six weeks, if that shit doesn't work, this war is over. Like we can't. Like people were in the streets in France and Germany, the UK is in shambles. The economy is shit. Like the United States is bad. The UK is in deep economic turmoil. Joe Biden is as unpopular than ever. You have the American people that have turned against the war in massive ways compared to last year. Ukraine is fucked, and they are very, they very openly saying this stuff to the press. Like even Joe had to admit this. The West is watching the next offensive, and if the next offensive they can't do shit, that's when they like, man, we probably gotta fucking negotiate our way out of this. <laughs> I hope that's why you see them soft walking it on media. And I don't know if we'll get a chance to bring it up, but Morning Joe. Uh, if I would have went on yesterday, I would have covered it. Morning Joe. They had a Morning Joe segment that amazed me how they were I covering. Or did I cover it? Did I cover it with Wyatt? But it amazed me how they were. No, I did cover it with Wyatt. I'm sorry. I did cover it with Wyatt on Wednesday. Crazy. They amazed me how <laughs> they were trying to now act like, oh, we are we are choosing to pivot to, ah. <laughs> to China. So, you know. This, if this whole peace thing in Ukraine is going to work out, of course China's going to have to be involved like they're not the ones leading it. They're trying to make it seem like now they're trying to get in front of the narrative like we're the ones leading it, even though Russia's and doing the worst, sort of like the Nazis. Deal, sorry, CJ, but they also know China's peace deal is extremely popular internationally. Mm -hmm. So if if this Ukrainian offensive fell, like many people predict it will fail, then they will have to rely on the Chinese peace plan. And then they don't want to be like, damn, China led the way on this. They're going right. to like, oh, no. See, I had this idea, and I saw your coverage. Your guys' coverage was great on this. They're like, I had this idea. How, how about we do this thing called diplomacy where we work with China <laughs> and we work with peace and they pretend they want uh, to the idea? You know what you guys were saying on the stream yesterday? It was, it was fantastic. But it was great to see that on, specifically uh, on, uh, on uh, Morning Joe. And shout out to uh, Wyatt. We're going to be doing a new show, Nick, on Wednesdays. He and I will be doing a show. Wednesdays oh, with Wyatt. <laughs> yeah, so he was like, he oh, was like, fire. hey, he hit me up. He was like, hey, man, I'll be down to do this regularly. I was like, for real? Oh, that's fire. Yeah. Wyatt, so, is, a, so yeah. Wyatt is, is, a, is an independent citizen journalist that cover international affairs, but his takes on everything is fire. Like, yeah. he, he has, like, his, like, he specialized in Latin American politics and obviously he's been following with Ukraine and he's been on the ground in Ukraine. But you ask him about any goddamn issue, this boy is on point. So I'm actually very excited about that. I'm very excited. Yeah, that's gonna be nice. The name of the podcast. When's that the gonna be end fire? of Empire? The end of Empire, because that was on his uh, his profile. So that's a yeah. good little segment to shout that out. But let's let's get back to it. Yeah. So um, go ahead. Why why Wednesdays and then Nick at night? Wednesday yeah. be that's gonna be nice. Day, so you always um, have different guests. What I like about your show. You have like a regular staple sort of people that's always on there, but then again, you always yeah. you know surprise people with somebody different. I always try to bring people that slept on, like these people that slept yeah. on. Yeah, people I feel that should have way more followers. People I feel smarter than me, like when you guys hear Andrew, like I think that motherfucker like one hundred percent. Yeah, no, I love Andrew. One hundred percent show me. somewhere. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's continue this segment. Yes, sir. The reason I, the reason I stopped it because they, that's the lie they always tell. They said Russian got no wins. I just straight up lies. Like in 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 the example I give you guys illustrate that if if Russia had no wins, why are you guys telling the Ukrainians that this next offensive is so important? <laughs> like if you guys don't win this this next offensive, we're fucked. And also, this, if Russia is so weak and if Russia can't beat Ukraine, why do you guys spend NATO? Why is this mm -hmm. freak out? Why did Japan got spend the military? Why did this big freak out over going to war with Russia and Russia taking over the world if they're not strong enough to beat the Ukrainian army? Their narratives do not match up. If you actually have critical thinking skills, and you see what the hell they were saying, but see, John, and this is a it. and this is a litmus test, Nick, or this is a way for people to determine if the U.S. government is telling them the truth, mm -hmm. right here, because this is provable, something <laughs> tangibly you can prove, maybe not physically in, in real life, but 
uh, tangibly, you can go look and see for your own eyes outside of any sort of U.S. corporate owned media. And you'll see the story that every other country is telling about this war. You'll see how it's different. And you match that up with what the United States government and their lackeys, state media, is telling us. They're complete opposite. And that's how you can say, OK, I know this this is a lie. So then you can say everything else is a lie for those that need help. To get there, many of us have, have already been here. Go ahead. I'm going to let uh, Bid this play. I actually had two clips, but if, depending on time, I may say the other one for tomorrow. Um, we see. So yeah. particularly this video you're looking at right now that uh, oh, claims to show the actual impact strike when this. Look, look at the language they're using. It claims to show. I'm looking at this shit. It looked clear to me <laughs> what the fuck is happening here. And there's another segment that I didn't get a chance to do because I was, wasn't was feeling well last today. But there's a segment before this where, where Morning Joe, um, I wish I could play in chronological order. This is the point where they had to admit what was going on. When this story first blo- broke, Morning Joe and their crew did a whole thing where they're like, there's no evidence. <laughs> there's this, this terrorist attack. This is a this is te- you know, textbook Russian playbook where they just make mm. shit up. Then the video came out. <laughs> I remember. The, I, I wish I had it in order, but the they exact, they were denying the evidence of this. Then the video came out, and now they're like the lead the lead video <laughs> where you appear to see <laughs> the false flag. <laughs> like, like I wish you guys could see the timeline. Of more, uh, it's been cool. This is like the, this is the point where they actually acknowledge the reality. So they brought. They're like, man. I'm not Joe, Joe Scarborough, like, man, I'm not good enough to spend this shit. We need to bring a professional on. <laughs> wow, Joe Boy, if <laughs> Joe Scarborough is like, no, nah, I can't do this one. Joe's like, man, I'm, trust me, I'm, back. I'm on top of my game, man. I'm leading the DNC propaganda. I am I am the motherfucking man, but I don't got this one. And sometimes you got to be humble. <laughs> you got to be humble enough to call in help. Uh, hey, that's my shit. I ain't calling a in good help. propagandist knows when he can't do the job, though, like by yes. itself. A good propagandist, he'd be like, okay, no. A good no. propaganda has no ego. He's like, man, if I can't spend this shit, we'll break <laughs> All right, let me continue. Uh, we got like once again, we have two, but depending on time, I may say the other part for. I, and I and I have a couple things too to insert yeah. here. So both these clips are good. Both these clips are good. I went to leave with this one, but the other one, I hope, hopefully, we've had time to cover. Let's let's get let's play a little bit more. Small drone, a hobbyist style drone, is coming close to the dome uh, in the Kremlin, and then, according to a statement from the Kremlin, was blown up by electronic defenses, not causing any any significant damage, clearly not uh, hurting or killing Putin, because Putin was not even in Moscow at the time, according also to the Kremlin. Now, you asked about the videos, and most videos, when they come out online, and our social verification, uh, social media verification team here in London has been pouring through all these videos for the last several hours. Generally, what happens is there is a video that comes out, and then they spread quickly across the internet as people share it, repost it, repost it, and they they go nuclear, or they go viral, and that is often when videos are doctored or Ah. or changed in some way. Ah. What happened in this case is there was this first video at 2.37. This is, I'm going to let it play some more because I want, I think their cult speaks for itself. But this is after Morning Joe got caught like just lying about this shit. So they're like, what happened? See, what happened was it wasn't lying that the the, the Russians, they they weaponized the internet. (laughs) (laughs) You never know, those doctors. This when this when this guy gets into real like uh uh white chessboard level conspiracy theory. You got me on Glenn Beck. Like this is what this guy's about to do. He's about to put all this the giant conspiracy theory together. Listen to this part. Moscow time. And it showed the aftermath of the attack. And I see you've got a, a graphic. So this first uh, this this first video came out, and it showed a little bit of smoke. Uh, it was apparently taken from a building called the Embankment House, which is not very far from the Kremlin. And uh, then things went quiet. A 12-hour gap elapsed when there were no videos. This initial video did not get a lot of traction. And then right around 3 o'clock, uh, several videos started emerging, showing the alleged aftermath and also showing the the impact at the time. 
And as these new videos came out in an apparent coordinated way, coordinated. that is when the statements uh, came out from the Kremlin saying that Kiev was responsible, that this was an att attempted assassination of Vladimir Putin. So, sir, sir, are you implying that Russia and Putin uh, had some godlike control over the internet? If you guys listen, that's what he's implying. Weather like, and oh. internet. He's a weather sorcerer and an internet sorcerer. This man the winner, sub zero, weather god. He also the god of the internet and can, and can dictate what video trends. He's like, man, isn't it weird that there was just one video that didn't get traction? Then it, was, it went dark and then all of a sudden, this, this, this is chalkboard level conspiracy theory shit right here. Let, let, let's continue. Putin. So it was not an organic spread across the the internet instead we saw a it wasn't organic i should let it play to that part but this is part we say it wasn't or an organic spread of the internet this is pulling weaponizing the internet because <laughs> there's a terrorist attack you would think people want to report on that right of course right. people spread that shit around it was like yo remember when morning joe and a lot of liberals said this terrorist attack russia was lying about it. here's the video and then morning joe coping with the fact that they got caught lying they're like Man, there's this fucking who? Why do people care so much? There's this fucking almost manufactured interest in this. Of course, people will be interested in this. Are you? No, serious? what he's describing, what he's doing is this is a propaganda tactic. Instead of using the word viral, which will take people's calmness down about this, he describing viral. He's saying yeah. it's not organic because viral means it spreads like wildfire, right? It's not. It's not like just normally gain on. It's it's something that ignites. And that's what he's doing. He is just using the definition or describing viral without saying it. Because if he uses viral, then people will just understand, oh, you mean this is something that's caught fire because people's interest, public interest was very high in it. In it. Just yeah, terrible. Let me, let's continue. A sedation of Vladimir Putin. So it was not an organic spread across <laughs> the, the internet. And instead, we saw a video emerge then silence, and then other videos put out uh, on, on social media, which were then used to, to justify this, these statements put out by the crowd. And by the way, and, and I'm just anecdotal. Feel free to share your anecdotal experience in the comments. That is not what I saw. <laughs> this story that they're making up, where the video came out and no one responded to it for hours. No, what I saw, as soon as that video hit, people were like, wait, hold up, hold up. Did Zelensky start training? Ukraine start training? Putin and Moscow started training. I have no idea what they're talking about here. Anyway, let's continue. Also, something interesting in the video you're playing again right now. If you you look, uh, if you go back to that first one, the, the the clearest one of the strike itself, you can see two people climbing up the scaffolding of the dome. Ah. Now, what they were doing at two thirty in the morning, climbing up that scaffold, is unclear. And also, you see, they do react in a way which suggests that something. May have now, so now imagine if this was 9-11, okay? Because the establishment people say 9-11 people are conspiracy theorists. This guy is doing the same fucking thing. This guy is doing the same thing a 9-11 conspiracy theorists do when they show a video of 9-11. They're like, hey, there's this guy near the building. Can you explain that? I heard, hey, you see that dot on the screen? Who knows? Who knows who that is? That's what he's doing right now. Like, this is I was just is about to say the same thing. This is all this is. He is... He's literally, and he doesn't go further explain. He, all they do is just bring up a question. Look at this. Look at that. Why is that there? Huh? I don't know. Me either. But, I mean, somebody should know. And then they just go to the next thing. It's like, why are you, like, he, all he's doing is kind of, like, describing the tapestry just to act like he's, uh, without seeing it. And this is such a propaganda tool <laughs> to just kind of bring it up and then go, but I'm not saying. You know what I mean? It's one and not to take the responsibility of accusing it, but you're still bringing it up. So you're planning it in the people's minds, the viewers' yep. minds, without taking the responsibility of actually saying it uh, and taking ownership Again, of it. He sounded like the stereotypical, what they were smart as a conspiracy theorist. If you guys could, one of them, the girl had no problems with conspiracy theorists at all. <laughs> but anyway, they was, they was, the, 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 the uh, stereotypical conspiracy theorist, like, I don't know, man. I'm just asking questions. I don't well, know. We have... What he's doing, man. He's like, you know, I'm not but... saying that guy did anything, but isn't it weird that guys over there do... Isn't it weird that <laughs> who was, it went dark for eight hours? Who knows? They probably manipulate everything. I'm not saying well, it's, it. a, asking it's a difference between ruling class trying to 
manufacture a conspiracy, yeah, we're not down for those. <laughs> then somebody like what they were calling all the things about COVID conspiracy, then can they, they can end up being true. So it's a, it, you know what I mean? It's, it's a difference. Anytime the conspiracy that's coming from the ruling class, then they're trying to cover up a truth that has already been exposed. Uh, North Stream Pipeline is another uh, example of that. But you can continue if, yeah, you, if there's more video. It happened. It could be doctored. We, we still don't know. But you do see what, lead, what looks like two people climbing up that scaffolding reacting in a way. And also, if you look on the other side of the screen, in a way. And, and once you see it, you can sort of never unsee it. Uh, <laughs> it, it seems that this video was taken of somewhat by someone who was filming a security camera because there's a reflect. <laughs> he said, man, once you see this part, you won't be able to unsee it. <laughs> if you've ever seen this guy's other reporting, he doesn't talk like this. It's so choppy. It's so like, not like where he's uh, uh like keep entering. He doesn't normally talk like this when he's reporting. Yeah. In my opinion, this is clearly where he is just out. Hey, go on camera and just throw some shit to the wall, man. Do what you can do, and then break. And then and he said, you know what I mean. And then he just came out here and just started saying a bunch of shit. This is clearly not like sourced information that he would normally report on doesn't at all feel secure in what he's saying and just throwing out a bunch of hypotheticals. Yep. So I'm, this is the conspiracy theory part again. Let's get, I'm going to play some more of it so you guys can hear it. Reacting in a way. And also, if you look on the other side of the screen, and, and once you see it, you can sort of never unsee it. Uh, it, it seems that this video was taken of somewhat by someone who was filming a security camera because there's a reflection off of this. And on the opposite side of the screen, you can see what looks like cabinets, someone taking the video who comes in and out of screen. Uh, so the, the, the video itself is quite clear, but then there is, you can see someone filming the screen with their, with their cameras themselves. So a, a, it seems that it was more of a release of videos than an organic spread across the internet. Wow, Richard Engel, that is a lot of information. Wow, even, even her, even she, she's like, holy shit, this guy's good. <laughs> bullshit propaganda game. And almost like she's like, man, wow, you really have no shame, don't you? I couldn't do that. She's like, man, I couldn't do that, but goddamn, thank God. Thank she's God. Like, I him. couldn't do that, and I'm married to Greenspan, and I still <laughs> didn't do that. <laughs> 